What's happening everybody? Willie here. Good old wanna go fishing. You know, the other day, which you know when we say the other day, that usually means it was about two months ago. Might have just been a couple of weeks ago. I did a video on a reel that I had purchased at a flea market slash antique store, or whatever. Uh, Zebco XB65. Now this is a spinning reel. It was a single bearing spinning reel from, I've, I'm going to say late 60s, early 70s, somewhere in there. And uh, I wound up sending that reel to a friend of mine, Dan Selvig, up in Minnesota. And he's right now, as we speak, he's trying to catch all kinds of huge fish with that thing. He likes it. He loves that thing. He says it's a great reel. The funny thing about that was, when I say the word Zebco, the first thing that comes to mind are spin cast reels, push buttons, and things like that. Triggers. A little bit of everything. It made me wonder, though, what happened? Where did Zebco, Zebco, where did the Zero Hour Bomb Company go from making these really, really nice spinning reels, very well made, smooth, to really just sticking with spin cast reels? Well, I don't know. I, there's no way for me to find that out unless I call Zebco and go, okay, tell me something. Give me your history, and I want to know how this happened. But one of the things that, you know, as of today, is still being made is the 33. The Zebco 33 spin cast reel is still around. I think it, uh, 1954 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, was kind of the first time it ever popped into play. And uh, from that point on, They've had a 33 of some kind ever since. Well, it kind of makes you wonder. So instead of me sitting around wondering, I went ahead and picked up a Zebco 33 Gold. This is the 33 Gold. Now, this is not the bottom of the line, and this is not the middle of the road. I mean, not the top of the line. This is more the, this is more the middle of the road. This is a three-bearing reel. Um... It looks nice. I mean, it looks like it ought to be on the on Star Wars on the like an engine on the back of some kind of spacecraft that they fly away on. But um, it's not a bad looking reel. So I thought to myself again, and I think to myself a lot. Sometimes I actually talk out loud to myself, and sometimes myself answers. Most of the time, myself answers. Which is really great when you're by yourself because it gets lonely. But anyway, I said, Self, go on over to that drawer over there and get out an old 33. There's an old 33 right there. And again, this 33 falls into about the 1958 range, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's somewhere in there. And uh, this is just your, what they call just the Zebco 33. Now you had a 33 spinner, uh, but then after that came just the 33. And it came in a variety of colors. As long as you like silver and black, you could get black and silver. Just saying. But I thought it would be really neat to take these two reels, go out and see exactly is there any real difference? Is there any major... I mean, would I still just as soon use the old 33 as to use a new 33? Well, since we're sitting here at the old table of contents, how about I show you a few differences in the two guys? Even though they're related, they are very different. I'm not kidding. Mainly the thing... Let's see, this one's made in China. The gold. Stamped. Made in the USA. Right there on the bottom of the old bracket there. But let's look at a few differences here with these things, because uh, there is a few. There is. I'm not kidding. There's a few differences in these reels. You might not think there are, but there are. I mean, they're not twins or anything, but even twins are different. I know. I dated a couple. And let me just tell you this. Don't make a mistake. Kiss the wrong one. You'll end up chipping a tooth. Anyway, let's take a look here. We're going to just assess the 1958 version here. Okay, you still have your thumb. Good old thumb button. Now you have on here a clicker. 
if you flip the clicker, you're of course going to get clicking. But now what that clicking really is for is if you take and flip this little switch for your and reverse, now you can set that thing up that if anything bites, you're going to hear it when he starts heading away from you. You know, the other direction at full speed. Mach 7. Okay, then you flip it back and you can flip the clicker off and then you get your smooth with an I reverse. You have a drag on the side right there. Nice little drag button. Convenient, easy to get to. Really, that's about it. Nothing much to them. Uh, this particular one, I'm going to have to, you have a screw on the side of here on these old reels that you have to take that screw loose and that will allow you to get inside by twisting each cap rear and front to get off. Let's take it off. Let's get a screwdriver here and do the thing. I'm going to take the bottom cap off. You just give it a slight twist and the cap comes off. Got a little grease in there so it helps push on that little pin up inside. Let's just lay that down this way. Now let's take this top one off. I'll let you look inside there. It's a little greasy because it's been cleaned up. But your button on this particular one pushes, let me see if I can get my finger in the right place, pushes on this little piece right here, which pushes both pieces up, pushing up on your spinner, which if you notice, that spinner piece that releases at the bottom, it's not pushing the spinner itself up. But, let's see here if I can make it, there we go. The pin went inside when you push up on the center there, and then your pin comes out. The spinner just screws right off the top. I mean, it's a very simplistic, well thought out little device. I think so anyway. Now let's see if we can get this other one apart. This fancy dancy 33 with the three bearings. Easy enough. You got dual pins, retrieval pins here. Same thing. On this one, however, though, the entire bell pushes up, or the cap, I should say, or spinner. This thing's already not acting right. Something's done happened internally here. Could this reel have actually already broken, like right here in front of me? It has. This thing has already legitimately broken right in front of me. Uh, that's not saying a lot about this reel. Let me take a little bit further look at what's... See if I can get this thing apart. Okay, this, this just... Um, it doesn't spin or anything. It is just pressed. It's just press fit on there and you got a spot back here if you can see you just stick a screwdriver in there and boop and that comes right off of there i'm trying to figure out what's happening here now you have a screw here that you can take where you can switch you know sides for left hand or right hand retrieve whatever you're after something has jammed it won't hardly even spin <laughs> i ain't never seen anything this is a first now I'm not kidding, this thing was working just as good, as nice as it could be, and now all of a sudden it's it's like it's got line tangled up in there or something, or, which I know isn't true because it's right there. I'm gonna end up having to take this whole thing apart before we can go use it. That is definitely a huge mark against the Zebco Gold, which is supposed to be, you know, a step up Middle of the road there. And I have a strange feeling middle of the road with this one's gonna mean that's where I'm gonna throw it. Now see, here's part of the problem here. Say you bought this reel for your child, you know. Uh, you're getting ready to go fishing. You haven't even taken it out of the box yet and you know, you're going camping, you're going fishing or whatever and you head out to the lake and you get out there and your child's like, hey, I want to go visit. And you say, okay. And then you take this thing out of the box and put some line on it, which it came with line on it. And you go to cast it. Now it won't reel. What are you going to do then? Huh? Huh? It's almost like one of the bearings is not. It's a three bearing reel. So you got one bearing 
right there where the crank goes in. I'm pretty sure there's one bearing in the top here where that gear goes through. Having a little bit of a problem figuring out where the third one is, but... Okay, one bearing out. There's a washer behind the bearing. Just remember that. Okay, and then there's a, there's a black spacer over here instead of a bearing. Let's push that out. And then you can take your main gear out. I say, and then, there you go. Okay, there's your other bearing. Where's the third one? Oh, that's the, oh, I see what happened. Okay, you got needle bearings in there. One of the needle bearings has gotten sideways. That's your other bearing, I guess they're talking about right there maybe. I don't know, I'm not sure. But that is a needle bearing and the needle bearing is sideways. Now, how did that happen? It's a plastic housing for the needle bearings. The needle bearings sit in there sideways. And there's, there's one there falling out. I'm telling you now, this is not looking good for the Zebco Gold. It's, it's just not. This is not a good thing. This is not a good look. This isn't a good look for Zeb. That's not what I want. Where's my noodle nose? There they are. All right, let's see if we can get this other bearing. How did that get up there? Uh oh Okay, I got it off of there. So this episode may just be on the repair of a brand spanking new Zebco Gold Rear. Okay, as you can see, I've got reel scattered throughout. The grease that, that Zebco has inside the reel is not pleasant. Okay, let's get some grease. There's a little plastic housing right here. That is what holds all the needle bearings. So I'm gonna take a little grease if I can find it. Where'd my grease go? Got my grease and oil and all that stuff. I actually had it on the old Royal Enfield out there. Cause I was planning for a journey, a trip, a place to go and test these two reels. But little did I know, I was gonna end up rebuilding this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little grease on that plastic bezel, whatever that thing is, that holds these little needle bearings. So that way the bearing will stay in when I put it back in the, in the reel. The real question is, how did it come out? Isn't that the real question? Or is the real question, why are you making this video anyway? And why do you live on a racetrack? Okay, all of those little needle bearings are back in their place. Now, it was inside this little cappy doodah thing. Okay, they're all in there, as far as you know. All right, that's what it was. That's what the problem was. See how that's turning really easily now. All that was, was one of those needle bearings has somehow gotten sideways. Craziness, I'm telling you, it's absolutely crazy. So let's put this back in here. Now we gotta get our spacer on the other side. Then we have this little horseshoe shaped clippy doodah that goes here. And you know, honestly, it's still turning hard. I mean, it's not as hard as it was, but it's still not, it's not comfortable. Let me get this thing back together and we'll see what we got going on here. There's something still broken here. There's something not right. It's got me curious now, but I will tell you right now, I do not mess with junk like this very long. I do not. I mean, this is like, this is great television. That's what this is. Because this actually happened right in front of you. It did, that's what it did. Look at the bearing, the bearing is down, the bearing's down there. They fell out again. Now what's causing that? There's two bear, three.
All right, I'm going to take this thing apart one more time. If it does it again, we're going to just say, hey, that thing broke right in front of us. Because I, again, do not mess around with junk very often. This is just, and this is junk. So we're, we're back. Um, I turned the camera off just because uh, the reel broke, not broke, it broke the first time, then I put it back together. It did the same identical thing it did the first time. I took it back apart, put it back together again, and the little plastic basket that holds those needle bearings. If one needle bearing manages to get out of there and get sideways, it stretches the plastic basket out somehow or another to where it allows it to keep doing that. Now, I kind of messed with the basket as best I could to get it working again, but it's, 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 not, it's not working right. Um, it, it would work. I'm not going to tell you I couldn't take it out and fish with it. But I am going to tell you that I'm not going to take it out and fish with it because um, it's going to most likely, uh, it's got line on it that came on it here. And I'm trying to get it out of here. Anytime you buy a reel, um, I'm going to be honest with you. First thing you do, take the line that's on it off because this is, this is terrible. When you put the spinner on it, oh, now the anti reverse is broke. Yeah, it broke. That must have been part of the anti reverse. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what it was. It's part of the anti reverse and it doesn't work anymore. Now, how would that work in there? It doesn't. It does not work now. The anti reverse does not function. So I'm guessing that bearing, that little plastic basket, had something to do with the anti-reverse. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not taking it apart again. Uh, a brand new, right out of the box reel should not have done this. Especially carrying a name that has been around as long as this one has. That's disappointing. But anyway, everything's back together the way it's supposed to be. There's no... It just broke. It just literally broke right in front of us. Well, here's my advice. Stay away from these. And that is the first time, other than some lying I think I talked about once, that you've ever heard me say, don't mess with this. Uh, and the re I'll tell you the main reason for why I'm saying that is because, again, this is right out of... This is right out of the box. And it it's garbage. It's absolute garbage. It broke right here in front of us on the table in front of us. And uh, if you're out at the lake with your kid or even just yourself, you know, and had to deal with that. I mean, don't get me wrong, you still fish with it, but it's incredibly hard to turn. The basket now is out of whack because of the bearings. And uh, it's got no anti-reverse now, which I'm assuming that part was part of this anti-reverse junk hey i'm sorry it's junk 1958 okay i'm going to take my 1958 i'm going to put this back on here i only took it apart to show you put this back on here i'll uh, put the zebco at the bottom i don't want that i like the zebco up where i can see it there you go. Then you take your screwdriver, tighten down that so that the caps do not come off. There you go. Every time I can go with it. There's no bearings in here, okay? Look at that. There's no bearings in there. 1958. I just, if I can own, well, the Zero Hour Bomb Company definitely made a bomb. The Zebco Gold, three bearing, piece of garbage. So anyway, now maybe you've got some out there that have lasted forever that are great and haven't given you any trouble at all. 
but you just saw one right out of the, the package just break right here at the table. Not even fishing with it. Just showing you, just turning it. Yeah, I'm worked up, I'm worked up! Anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it was so depressing, but that's life. Uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes you buy apples and sometimes you buy lemons, and uh, today we got a lemon. Zebco Gold, three bearing, fancy schmancy. Anyway, hey, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Whatever the next one may be. Come here, you piece of junk. I might take the bearings out of you and keep those.